from salt city lights to Jeju's breezy coasts, I've sketched it all. Peek into my sketchbooks and see South Korea as I did. In 2021, my husband and I, just a couple of students back then, decided to pack our bags for a year abroad in South Korea. Now these sketchbooks, think of these as a visual journal. Every page holds a piece of South Korea as I saw it, with each page sketched on location. For those of you who have watched my sketching videos on this channel, you know how I work and create these type of sketches. In February 2021, right in the middle of the pandemic, my husband and I packed up our lives in Germany and moved to South Korea. As soon as we got there, we had to quarantine for two weeks because of COVID-19. And due to the rules at the time, we had to do our quarantine separately. So there I was, stuck in a new place with only my window to give me a glimpse of where I was. I spent a lot of time just looking out, seeing bits of my new neighborhood. With not much else to do, I started sketching. I drew parts of our apartment, what I could see outside, pretty much anything that caught my eye. Now, looking back, I remember feeling really rusty with my sketching. Before we moved, life was very hectic in Germany and I hadn't done much art. Now, in South Korea, I felt stuck like I couldn't get back into it. But I remember pushing myself at the time and I decided to do one sketch every day no matter what it was. I just wanted to keep a record of my experiences and slowly get back into drawing. I love this page. It's not even because of the sketch on it, but because of a note I wrote down. Ich habe Angst zu zeichnen, which means I'm afraid to draw. At the time, I was really feeling scared, as I told you before. It was like I had lost my touch with drawing and making art, but I'm glad I didn't let that fear and anxiety stop me. If I had listened to those doubts, I wouldn't have all these sketches full of memories now. So when I look at this page with my note about being afraid, it reminds me of how important it is to push through fear and keep going. And I think what's important is by pushing through fear, I don't mean to push in an aggressive or self-hatred way, but rather one from a place of empowerment and confidence where we recognize and see our fear and kindly allow it to leave if that makes sense. And speaking of sketchbooks, I deeply believe that they are not for perfect pages. In mine, you'll find plenty of pages that just didn't turn out right. Some might call them failures, but in my opinion, that's exactly what a sketchbook is for. It's a safe space to make mistakes and mess up. Those so-called failed pages are just as important as those so-called good ones, because every page good or bad, is a step forward in our journey as artists. Oh man, I love this sketch. So let me tell you the story behind it. When I was living in South Korea, I got to experience Buddha's birthday for the very first time. We went to this temple just outside Seoul and it was run entirely by nuns. I remember this one moment when one of the nuns was talking to us about life, our past and our future. And I was so moved by her words that I just started crying like full on tears streaming down my face. At the beginning of summer, we took a trip to other places around Korea. First stop was Sokcho, a gorgeous city on the east coast. We spent some time at the beach and hiked in this really beautiful national park there. Thank you. 
then we headed to Jeju, a volcanic island in the south. It was so beautiful that we ended up going twice, once in summer and again in the fall. So you'll see more Jeju sketches later on. Alright, that wraps up the first sketchbook. Time to dive into sketchbook number two. That sticker in the front was from my favorite kimbap shop in my neighborhood. You will see a sketch of the owners in just a few minutes. Alright, so the start of this sketchbook is all about the road trip my husband and I took across South Korea. We had this grand plan to drive all around the country, but at the end, we ended up getting totally captivated by this one incredible place down south. During our journey, we saw some old temples, villages and just stunning places. But let me tell you the most beautiful spot in all of South Korea in my opinion, is Namhae. Namhae just made my German heart skip a beat and here's why. Namhae has a German village which was founded by Koreans who used to live in Germany. Back in the 60s, a lot of Koreans went to work in Germany to help out their economy. When these Gastarbeiter or foreign workers returned to Korea, they built this village in Namhae. The houses there look German, they have German restaurants and bakeries. I basically ate pretzels every single day while we stayed there. I absolutely fell in love with this place. It was like finding a little piece of home in my new home. Okay, I've got to show you this sketch. It's one of my favorites. It's of this adorable little store called Hanamat, which was right in front of where we lived in Juwandong. I'll talk more about Juwandong later, but in Korea, these small shops are pretty common. They are often family run and you can find them on almost every corner in the neighborhood. We loved Hanamat. The family who owned the shop were so sweet and kind and we basically went there every single day. Okay, so in my neighborhood, there was always this group of elderly men gathered together, sitting on small plastic chairs and playing a game. They were playing Changi, which is a strategy board game, pretty similar to chess, I guess. I used to see these guys all the time when I was out for a walk. They'd be so focused on their game, discussing moves and just enjoying each other's company. So one day I thought, why not? So I just stood there with them and started sketching. Oh, okay, I love this one. So I did it while riding on line one of the Seoul Metro. I was just sitting there sketching this group of people in front of me. Now in the Metro in Korea, there are these pink seats specifically reserved for pregnant women. Most of the time people respect that and leave them empty, but you know that there's always an exception. So in my sketch, there's this guy sitting on one of those pink seats, clearly not pregnant. It's kind of funny because in Korea people usually stick to rules pretty closely but like anywhere else in the world you always got someone who decides to bend them a little bit. Every time I look at that sketch I can't help but smile. 
All right, so now we are on our way to Busan, the second largest city in South Korea. Even though it's a big city, it's got a totally different feel from Seoul. I think a lot of that comes from being a coastal city and there's just something about being near the ocean that changes the whole vibe of a place. And oh my god, you guys, I'm telling you, the food in Busan is something else. The fish cake there is amazing. You can really tell that you're in a city that loves its seafood. And it's not just about the food, the culture, the ocean views. Everything there is just beautiful. So we are back in Seoul now and I've got to talk about Hongdae. This place of the city is buzzing with students and young people. It's like the hotspot for youth culture in Seoul. But there's this one thing about Hongdae that really caught my eye. Right near my favorite art supply store, there was a street filled with fortune tellers and shamans. And I would often see groups of young people, curious and excited, popping in and out of these tents. And it's such a unique sight, especially in a city as modern and fast-paced as Seoul. That contrast, that blend of the old and the new, is just one of the many things that make Korea so special and intriguing, I think. Now let me tell you about our favorite spot in Juwondong, or in all of Korea I guess. The kimbap shop run by this adorable elderly couple. This sketch right here is my all-time favorite because it brings back so many warm feelings. We used to go to their tiny shop almost every other day and after a while they knew exactly what we liked to order. They were always so generous feeding us while we waited for the freshest, most delicious kimbap you could imagine and it wasn't just about the food sometimes they would give me a cult to drink or in autumn and winter they would hand me chestnuts and make sure i ate them all and what i loved the most about them was how they always tried to chat with us we couldn't speak korean and they couldn't speak english but that didn't stop them they made such an effort and every time we visited they made us feel right at home as we reached the end of sketchbook number two, it was autumn in Korea. Around that time, my husband and I decided to do something really special, a so-called temple stay. It's this program where you can spend a night or two at a Buddhist temple, getting a real feel for the monastic life. The temple we went to was incredibly small and in a remote village near the North Korean border. The place had this timeless beauty, like stepping back into Korea from a hundred years ago. And one of my favorite sketches from that time is of the monk who lived at the temple. He was such a kind soul and he always had this orange cat following him around and that experience was just unforgettable. We prayed with the monk, shared meals, had tea together, helped clean the temple and even went for walks. That experience was so peaceful and grounding. Sketchbook number three kicks off with another trip to Jeju, this time in autumn. We'd been there in summer before, as you might remember, but we just had to come back for tangerine season. So let me tell you, picking tangerines at a farm in Jeju is an experience of its own. We could pick and eat as many as we wanted and those tangerines were unbelievably tasty. Nothing like I've ever had before. But the real reason we returned to Jeju 
was to take on Halasan, the highest mountain in South Korea. It's actually an old inactive volcano and the hike up to the summit was a challenge, especially for a hiking newbie like me. I sketched the landscape as we climbed, capturing the stunning views. The hike was really tough on me and I remember not being able to walk at all the day after. Autumn in Jeju is just gorgeous, the weather was perfect, so we spent a lot of time by the ocean and exploring other islands around Jeju. I was really fascinated by the volcanic rocks there. People use them for all sorts of things, even for walls around the house. I loved sketching those unique landscapes and structures and Jeju has this natural beauty that's just so different from anything else. So once we were back in Juwondong for the autumn, the neighborhood just transformed. The ginkgo trees turned this brilliant warm yellow color that made everything look like it was glowing. And speaking of memorable scenes, anyone from Korea remember that huge pink teddy bear in Hongdae? during autumn 2021? If you do, drop a comment because I still think about it. Most of our autumn was spent around Juandong in Seoul and I tried sketching some elderly people doing exercises in our local park but let's just say it didn't turn out as planned and we visited several temples during this time and I was really drawn to watching people pray. There's just something so peaceful and comforting about seeing people connect with their spirituality and getting in touch with their inner selves. Okay, so during autumn when Squid Game hit Netflix, it was like an instant sensation in Korea. Like seriously guys, Koreans are so quick to jump on trends and start new ones. And suddenly my neighborhood was full of talguna, which are these biscuits from the show. And people were buying them left and right, trying to play the same game they saw in the show. And here's my all-time favorite winter snack, which are roasted Korean sweet potatoes or kukuma. There was this old man in Juwondong who sold the best roasted sweet potatoes ever. They were just so delicious, warm, sweet, and just perfect for the colder weather. The last sketch captures a really special moment. My husband and I dress in traditional Korean clothes, 
called Hanbok. We decided to do a photo shoot at one of the palaces in Seoul and of course I had to sketch us in those beautiful outfits. And with that we come to the end of my series of colorful sketchbooks where I mostly used ink and watercolor. Now I'm excited to take you through my very last sketchbook and I think it's my favorite one. So this last sketchbook I'm going to show you is really special. I named it Juwondong after the town we lived in Korea. And I picked this sketchbook up in an art supply store in Insadong, this traditional district in Seoul. The sketchbook looked cute but oh boy the paper was picky. I tried all sorts of art supplies on the last page to test it out but it turns out the only thing it liked was a gel pen. That's why this whole sketchbook is filled with gel pen drawings nothing else would work on that paper for this sketchbook I stuck to sketching daily life but I decided to focus on a specific theme my neighborhood in Juandong every day I would go out wander around find a house or building that caught my eye and sketch it across a double page it's simple but I absolutely love the end result because when you open the sketchbook fully it looks like one one continuous street stretching from page to page. It's like a panoramic view of Juandong. And again, sketching has this way of making you really notice your surroundings. And thanks to this project, I discovered how much my neighbors in Juandong loved plants. Seriously, like every home and shop had all sorts of plants out front. And the electric wires running all around the streets, I just made sure to include those in my sketches too. Something that I really want to make clear is that I'm not sharing these sketchbooks with you to show off or anything. I just really love them because they hold so many memories for me all in one place. If I have any goal with sharing the sketchbook tour, it's to inspire you to try it out yourself. If you feel anxious about starting a sketchbook, I hope you can acknowledge your anxiety, thank it for trying to protect you, but then dive in with excitement and freedom because a sketchbook is a great place for any artist to learn self-compassion I think and remember it's okay to have empty and failed pages allow yourself that freedom and I hope you leave this video feeling inspired to create magic in your own sketchbook to fill pages with memory joy and the courage to be kind to yourself Take care, my kindest people out there, and I can't wait to share more with you in my next video. Maybe something like this one? Mm -hmm.